You suppress the truth. The truth is you're a male. But you suppress it. You put some hormones and get a little bit of bubby. And now you're telling me you're a woman. You ain't no woman. Anybody with me here? They suppress the truth. The honest truth is I'm a male. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. If today is your first time of stopping by, here we promote the truth and help people to strengthen and grow their faith in Christ. So if you have not subscribed to our channel, don't hesitate to hit the red subscription button and be part of this growth. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at Dr. Miles Muru of Blessed Memory and his take on same-sex marriage or relationship. Homosexuality has been a controversial topic for a long time, and this is one area that most ministers of God avoid to speak about. But I'm glad that there were men like Dr. Miles Moreau who came out and addressed the issue in love, making sense and bringing out logical facts that we all can agree with. I want you to take your time and listen to what he has to say concerning this subject. I will see you in the next one. Shalom. When there was an argument about homosexuality and debauchery and, and immorality and arguments that Paul had with people, you know, concerning things like uh, lesbianism and being effeminate and all this stuff we're arguing about today, that's old stuff. Paul, Paul says, look, Paul says, look. This is deep, you know. Paul says, I don't need to quote any scripture to you all. He says, even nature proves that this ain't right. Do you all remember that? No, you all don't remember that? Okay. I know some of you all don't read the Bible, so I don't want to assume that. Romans chapter 1. Paul is talking about all these things we're fighting over today. You know, same-sex marriage and lesbianism and all this stuff. Paul says, look. He says, you don't need God to write something on the wall for you. Look at verse 18. The wrath of God is already revealed from heaven against all the godly, godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That's an important... Suppress the truth means... I saw something on CNN yesterday. It still makes me sick thinking about it. A man who became a woman. So they claim. I think it says uh, her name was Steve or something like that. And I'm watching this program now. Don't turn the TV off, okay? And I'm sitting there thinking, what is this? Let me, let me read what it was. Verse 18. This is the Bible. This is exactly what you saw on CNN. It says, the wrath of God is already revealed against that. Men suppress the truth by their wickedness. You cut your penis off and call it a vagina. Now you know it ain't none. But you suppress the fact that it ain't not. You suppress the truth. The truth is you're a male. But you suppress it. You put some hormones and get a little bit of bubby. And now you're telling me you're a woman. You ain't no woman. Anybody with me here? They suppress the truth. The honest truth is I'm a male. What did I say? Oh, sorry. Boy, my bed uh, stuff comes out sometimes. <laughs> tell your neighbor, tell the truth. Let me tell you something. All my homosexual friends, I love you guys and, and, and girls, lesbians. But you are simply dishonest. If you want to have that kind of sex, just say so. But don't try to convince us to sanctify it, sanction it, and give it dignity. Just say that's what you want to do, that's all. If you want to use an exit as an entrance, just tell me the honest truth. Don't try to get me to dignify it, sanctify it, glorify it, and then make it legal. This, this is crazy. You're suppressing the truth. The truth is, this is an exit. This is an exit. Nature say this is an exit. It's a garbage disposal. This gets rid of waste. Now I ain't attacking nobody. Biology, simple 101. Biology 101. It's a law. 
the law of my rectum is excretion. It's a law. No legislation can transform that into something else. So if you see a fellow walking around with his wrist break, just say, tell him, legally, you are a brother. By law, you are a brother. Your walk don't cancel that law at all. Your earrings don't touch that law. Your, your relationship don't change that law. It's a law. So at least be honest with God. Tell God, I will violate your law. Okay? Thank you very much. That's honest. Be honest. What did I do? You are making me behave interestingly. Look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. Come on, all you young people, read this please. Verse 19, because some of you are getting tempted. Verse 19 says, Sin. <laughs> Come on, I want you to read this in your Bible. Turn your Bible, Pastor Mark. I want you to read this. Bring this back to your mind now. It says in verse 19 of Romans 1, Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them in nature, for since creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. The dogs got sense. I've never seen two male dogs getting it on. And in Bain Town, we got pot cakes. They, 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 they wild dogs. They still got sense. He said it's made plain through what? Creation. So that men are without excuse. See this? It's a law. These laws are built into nature. Oh, by the way, you might as well read the next one. For although they knew God, they go to church, hmm? take communion. Yes, they knew God. They neither glorified Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts are darkened. Although they claim to be wise, ooh, yeah, they have become fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their own bodies with one another. Can I go a little further? They, ex they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Listen, man. God said, look, this is plain. You telling me it's legal, and nature says it's illegal. Not me. Nature says nature says this can't work. Two women cannot have children. Okay, so let's just you know don't lie and tell me this way you you are you know. Listen, be honest. Now God already gave you over, so you have, you're going to self-destruct. But at least don't try to let don't, don't make all of us vote to support something illegal. And I say naturally illegal. Naturally illegal. This is why democracy is so dangerous. I am very suspicious of democracy. Because it makes laws based on majority, not based on what is right. If enough of us agree, we try to make wrong right. I want to also correct something I've been hearing for years in this country. The voice of the people is the voice of God. That's a lie. Because what you're telling me is if, 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 if enough of us agree on something, it must be God's voice. Are you crazy? You need to act like Joshua. Joshua says, look, I don't know about you all, but as for me and my house, sometimes you've got to go by your own self. Come on, give God a hand. God's voice may tell you walk alone. Don't let the majority convince you to do evil. Look at verse, 
Verse 25, they exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than creator who is forever praised. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchange natural relations to unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relationships with women who were inflamed with lust for one another and men committed indecent acts. Am I reading the Bible? In these acts with one another, with other men, receive in themselves, oh, glory, they receive in themselves the due penalty for their perversion, the Bible calls it. Now, let me tell you what, you cannot pervert what is not real. I'm going to say this again. Perversion implies that there's something that is right that you have excused to be wrong. It's perversion. You cannot take right and make it wrong. You can pervert it. So Paul is correct. Paul says it's perversion. Sex is good. But you can pervert it. You cannot pervert what is not present and what is not good. It has to be present first. Then you pervert it. It's like using a knife that you bought to slice tomatoes and you slice someone's throat. The knife is innocent. But you perverted the knife and made it a weapon. So, as a male, I am pure. And Pastor Richard is a male, he's pure. But we're not built to go together. But we can be... <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Richard, don't worry about a thing. <laughs> but we can decide, that's the problem, to come together. That's called perversion of the male entity. Perversion. Now, if you try to sanctify perversion, dignify perversion, and then legalize perversion, it's impossible. Because it will never work. Two males cannot produce. Cannot. They can pass all the laws they want. They can, they can have operations. Surgery. They, they cannot. It will never work. 